Great. At this stage, you know that Flash is a language that is compiled, and as such, there is source files and there are deploy files. I wanted to take a really quick overview understanding what are the source files in their essence and what are the deploy files in their essence. All right, so it, I usually organize our files to a source folder and a deploy folder, and we will see in later videos actually how do we get that, how do we actually create these files. But for now, let's just look at the structure of the files. So first we'll find in our source folder, we'll find our main FLA file, which is the main file, which is from that file, everything else begins. Now it doesn't have to be called main, but it is a .FLA file. There are two different um, formats for the FLA. FLA is a compressed file format already, which has inside of it different assets and uh, sound and video and whatever else we might have integrated into the file. Well, there's another video file format, which is called XLF, which is very similar to an FLA, only the assets are not combined and compressed into it. Now, a side note, and just ignore me if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you know what XML is, the XLF format is built out of an XML file structure, which then directs what type of files are inside of it and actually all the assets are external to that file in our case we're going to work with the default format which is the FLA format which compressed and holds inside of it every single asset and information that we put directly into it the next type of source file is the .as file. Now, normally, historically, in earlier versions of Flash, it was used also to use as an external source file reference. In ActionScript 3, every code that we put in, we want to put in an external file, and all it really is is a regular simple text file with a .as file extension. Now, normally, we're going to be building inside of it something that's called classes, and then we integrate between, we basically tell the main FLA that here is your main class. So in this scenario, we have our main file, and it, the main file basically tells, we tell the main file that this is your main class, this is where you'll find the code that will make your application operate. Now don't worry if you don't understand it completely, all you have to get from this initial video is that your FLA holds, your it's your starting file, it holds all the assets, it holds all the information that's needed, while your external .as files will contain the code. Now. All of this is or original files, they're not yet compressed. Now, once they go through the compiling process, the files are then compressed and compiled and, and translated down into a machine language or as we said, as into that uh, virtual language, virtual player language to enable that player to then translate into all the different browsers into the Flash player, and it's all compiled down into one Swift. And when we look into our deploy file, file folder, we'll see that we have a file called .swift, which actually is these two files compressed and down together and converted to be a machine language or similar to a machine language so the Flash player could take on easily and start working with it. It's not in a human language anymore. Now with it, we'll almost always find inside of our deploy folder a .html file, and that's a really important one just to note. You usually don't want to link clients or friends or anyone else directly to your Swift file, although you're going to upload both the .swift file and the .html file to the server or wherever you're going to host those files, usually you want users to interact with your HTML file, and that is because .swift files are meant to be baked or embedded into an HTML file. Now, you don't have to worry if you don't know HTML because we have our automatically Flash will compile down an HTML and create an HTML file as well. Now, I do recommend that you learn a little bit about HTML, but it's not mandatory for this course. We do have HTML titles on our site, and there's also a lot of really great free resources online, such as the W3C training that enables you to get a great overview of the basics of HTML and get it, gets you rolling really, really quickly working with it. So just to summarize, we had in our source files our FLA, .FLA file, our .as file, and in our deploy files we found our Swift, which was basically a compressed and, and compiled version of all the different stuff in our source folder, and a .html file, which is our container that will contain the Swift that we're going to be playing. With that said, there's a lot of other different file formats that we're not going to overview at this initial state of our training, but as we get introduced to those different file types, we will refresh our memory and figure out where do we need to put them? Should they be part of our source files baked into the FLA? Or should they be part of our deploy file where we're going to upload that MP3 file or we're going to upload that um, image file onto the web? Now, obviously, those are going to be more advanced topics that we'll cover them once we get to those topics. 
And that covers our overview, our intro to different file types. Now, the most important part out of this is make sure that when you're uploading something to the web, you're not going to upload your source files. You don't want people to have access to your source files. You only want them to have access to your product, which is the .swift, the .html file. But you don't really want to give them the FLA and the AS unless it's you're sending the source files to your client or something of that nature where you're aware that that's what you're doing. So that covers our, our intro to the intro to our training. In our next next video where we're going to look at the different versions of flash from flash cs3 and up to just show you the different variations in it because once we finish with that video we're going to jump around between the versions because the differences between the versions in our training level doesn't really matter so it's okay if you have flash cs3 and it's okay if you have flash cs6 all right so we're going to catch you in the next video where we're going to explore the basic ways to work with both versions and all the different versions from cs3 all the way up to cs6 and beyond.